Shoeless Joe actually kind of grew up in Greenville area and lived out his days here. All right, I think I found him. I would assume this grave over here with a pile of baseballs on top of it would be the great Shoeless Joe. Somebody say if he was banned from baseball, why would you call him the great? Doesn't that mean he did something really, really bad? Well, I'm not so sure he did, to be honest with you. Joseph Jackson, known as Shoeless Joe, did not care for that name particularly. And his sweetheart, his wife, Katie, they lived out their days. You can see all those baseball people coming out paying tribute. Joe was actually raised out here. His dad was a sharecropper, but Joe ended up having to get a job in a mill when he was like six years old. So when everybody else was going to first grade, he was working 12 hour days, believe it or not. I mean, we're talking the late 1800s, so there were no child labor laws or anything. And he did that for a year or two until he got measles so bad that he almost died. But he en ended up going back to the mill after he recovered. I think it took several months for him to recover from the measles. Went back to the mill and then by the time he was 12 or 13, the mill offered him a job playing baseball on the mill baseball team. How about that? That's crazy. Everybody else on the team was an adult. He was so good. They wanted him to quit working in the mill and just be a, a traveling baseball player. See, back then the mill teams were a big deal. There were a lot of mills and it was kind of a, it was good for morale, they felt. Having a, having a pride in your mill, just like, you know, baseball team now, gave the people that worked for the mill something to cheer for and he became highly sought after. He got a pretty good check. He started out getting like $78 game for joining the mill team, but eventually other mills were hiring him and he was getting more and more money. And then Greenville here had a team called the Spinners that was semi-professional and he was so good on the Spinners that the A's came calling. Connie Mack and the A's came and paid for Joe's contract and Joe became a Major League Baseball player. So if you're wondering, Joe was a, it's, he started out as a really good pitcher, but they realized he was a far better hitter. So he ended up playing the field and became one of the greatest hitters in the game. In fact, two of the top players that everyone pretty much always cites as the greats, Babe Ruth and Ty Cobb both called, Shoeless Joe Jackson, the greatest natural hitter they had ever seen. Babe Ruth even said that he had modeled his swing after Joe's because he just thought nobody could be any better than that. One of the problems with Joe is that since Joe had to work from the time he was a little boy, he never learned to read. He was illiterate. When he would do anything with the team, he would, he would basically just follow the other guy's lead. If they were ordering food or if they were checking in, he would just, to a hotel or something, he would just do it the same as them. He would just, if they were ordering food, he would just order what somebody else had ordered. And so sadly, what he's known for isn't being a phenomenal baseball player, it's for being a disgraced baseball player. You see, in 1919, pretty much in the prime of Joe's career, he played for the Chicago White Sox. And the White Sox were playing the Cincinnati Reds for the World Series. And in the end, the Cincinnati Reds, my team, won the World Series. However, there was some speculation that baseball was rigged and that there was gambling involved. This has been speculated, or at the time it had been speculated for several years that maybe the game was rigged. So when there was some speculation about this, Major League Baseball wanted to have a guy clean up baseball that people respected. And so they hired Kennesaw Mountain Landis to become the commissioner. And when Kennesaw Mountain Landis took over, 
even though there ended up being an investigation and it did go to court as to whether or not the White Sox players threw the game, whether or not they had taken a bribe from a gangster, from, you know, a seedy character to, in fact, throw the game so the Cincinnati Reds could win, they said that the White Sox, the jury found that the White Sox players did not do this. However, Kennesaw Mountain Landis decided that he was going to punish the players. And Joe was involved in that. Now here's the crazy thing. Joe had like a career game. He was the greatest performer in the World Series. He had more hits than anyone else. He really just excelled in all areas. Never, in fact, when the, when some of the players were questioned, they said he was never, Joe was never at any of the meetings, never involved in any of this. Um, there was no proof of it. However, somehow the lawyer was able to get a confession, a written confession out of Joe. Many people believe that it was because he was illiterate, that he didn't know what he was signing. And um, a man who had a career performance, like I said, through this World Series was accused of throwing the World Series. And because of that, he and other members of the White Sox were banned from baseball for life. Absolutely heartbreaking because this is something that, I mean, I think everyone would agree. Well, maybe not. I guess the times we were living in, I was gonna say, if a jury found you innocent, that you know that that would that would be accepted and that would be enough to get him rescinded but then again you look at you know oj simpson so he was found innocent and all that but shoeless joe sadly is not in the record books the way he should be he like i said beginning of the vlog he has one of the highest batting averages of anyone in baseball the season after 1919 world series he was hitting 380 he ended up being banned from baseball, but that didn't stop him from playing. He actually would go under a fake name and would go play pretty much anywhere semi-pro that he could play. He would earn a living for a couple of years. And then Katie, somebody in Katie's family or somebody in, might've even been Joe's family, somebody in their extended family got sick. And so they ended up moving back here and they opened up first a barbecue joint and then they opened up a liquor store. So I should probably tell you why he's known as Shoeless Joe Jackson. Um, he, like I said, he hated the name cause he felt like that was um, people calling him, you know, like a rube or like saying that he, you know, he grew up, lived his life without wearing shoes, which wasn't true. It was just that he, um, he had gotten really bad blisters. And uh, when he was, playing a game one day, decided to go without shoes and had a really great game and someone called him Shoeless Joe Jackson and the name just stuck. Now, he also was known for having this black bat. It was called Black Betsy. And Black Betsy was a gift from a fan that had been, it was like a dark bat that had been tobacco juice stained. So I've actually seen a couple of those. They have one in the baseball, Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. I forget where the other one was. I think it was in Louisville at the Louisville Slugger plant. So there, there are a couple of them out there floating around. Bats seem to have had a longer lifespan in the older days than they do now. Now they break like every game. But uh, I did bring one of my favorite black bats out here. I have an affinity for black bats as well. And it goes back to one of my favorite players, a kid, Dave Parker. So I got one of Dave Parker's bats. And the last time I was in Ohio, he signed it for me since I had acquired it. One of the greatest players ever battling Parkinson's. So I love the black bat too. I just wanted my black bat to come out and kind of touch Joe's grave, a little bit of the magic. Of course, probably the most famous thing that uh, if you didn't follow baseball before, you might've knew him from pop culture because of Field of Dreams. They depict Shoeless Joe as the man coming out of the cornfield. Now, crazy enough, Ray Liotta plays him, and Shoeless Joe was a left-handed batter, Ray Liotta was right-handed, and they never bothered to teach him otherwise. So when you watch the movie, Shoeless Joe actually batted from the other side. Down, they have a great statue of Joe. The house that he shared with Katie from 1940 until he passed away in 1951 is in town. It's been moved from its original location. It's now a 
museum dedicated to Shoeless Joe. And uh, I want to check that out, as well as the field he started playing on when he was a mill worker. Rest in peace, Joe Jackson, Katie. Joe actually died from several, he had several heart attacks and he eventually ended up dying from one of those. Mm -hmm. 